Hello everyone and welcome back to Story Talks. I'm Tess and we're here with Bori Monty Pryor. Bori, it has been so wonderful chatting with you, but I have to ask you, what is this amazing artwork that's behind you? Glad you asked that because I love it too. That's, they're all my nephews from up at Kurandamop and uh, that's up to range near Cairns. Uh, and I took that at the Laura Festival which is a festival that we have every two years. And we have it very close to Laura. It's in between Laura you, you, at the campsite. That's their, that's their dancing ground. There's a little bit out of Laura, but you go past 20,000, 30,000 year old pieces of art of the Flying Fox people and Quinkins on the way up there. Um, and we have two days of dancing and we tell stories and we just, that's where I get to see all my family again every two years. Well, it looks like an amazing thing to be a part it is. of. You guys left to go. Google okay. it, Laura Festival. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now okay. we have a question from young Ola. And she's Ola? Like, Ola. Ola. Okay. Ola. Hi, Bori. My name's Ola, and can you please tell us a story? Ooh, and can you make it a scary one? Ooh. Thank you. Bye. Well, do you know what? I'm glad you asked that question too. Like, I'm glad you asked all of those questions because I have a really scary story. I'm so scary, I don't think I should tell you. I've, I've told this to some people, and I remember I told it to someone like years ago, and they still haven't been to sleep. No, I haven't. They still they went to sleep. Um, but I know, I, it's, but it is really scary. Well, I think it is anyway. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I'll start out with, I've got to set the story up, all right? Who's been bitten by a mosquito? Good. Who's been bitten by a sandfly? Right. Well, sandflies, they're little itty bitty, bitty bitty scratchy things. And, and, and you can't see them. And all you can feel is like prickly pins all over you. Well, late in the afternoon, up home, when you look up in the sky, there's a big black cloud. And they're very low. But you know what this black cloud is? Flying fox. Not the ones you hang on to at school and go from one end to the other. These are flying fox. And they love eating mangoes and fruit and things like that. And you know what you have to do? Once you see them in the air like that, you got to race over, make a fire, and put lots of green leaves and then go and stand where the wind is blowing this way, you gotta stand right where the wind is blowing the smoke onto you. Because once they come past you, all the sand flies come down and attack you and they cover you all over. And it's like ping pricks all over your body. You just can't, or sometimes we, we dig a big hole and we lie in the sand till they go over. That's how annoying they are why I'm telling you about the flying fox because they are going to the place that I love to go to the mangroves and if you don't know what a mangrove is or what mangroves are they're the most beautiful place on earth and you know what these mangroves are the things that keep us alive. Same as with bees and trees, if the mangoes were gone, we'd be in big trouble. Not the mangoes, the mangroves. Well, the mangoes too, because I love mangoes. But if the mangroves were gone, in big trouble. And you know, some people don't like it. Because they smell. So what? We all smell. 
But when you get into the mangroves, it becomes water and it bubbles. It bubbles and farts. It's disgusting, but it's beautiful. And googly, googly things and creepy, crawly things. That was my favorite place because I used to go hunting there. So I'd have my spear, my kalka, little one, kalka, we call him spear. And I'd have a little hook, little steel hook. Then I'd have like a sugar bag, which is like a passion bag. And I'd have it about probably that big. Because I want to put my crabs in there. And I get chulkoi, which is shellfish, but also wuru, which is a round shellfish like that. And they stay on the mud and top of the mud and when there's when the when the tide goes out you see these tiny circles well they're about that big they're pretty big circles just under the mud you see these little circles these round circles all under the mud and you have to be careful when you go and get them because you get bogged down in the in the, in the mud it comes right up to your knee so what you have to do is listen to your parents because they tell you where to go and where not to go. So I got my bag. I go into the mangroves. Now remember I said that the mud is so thick that you sink down. So what you have to do is you have to climb up in a tree and like Tarzan you got to swing through the trees to get to the places where you can get your world and your chulkai but you got to be careful you know why when you put your hand up to grab a branch there might be a snake there there might be a lot of snakes there You know why the snakes are there? Because of them flying fox. The ones that bring all the sand fly. Because they come and hang there after they're going to feed a mango, they need somewhere to sleep. So they hang upside down there. So what do the snakes do? We might have gone up some flying fox. So the snakes go in there too. And the whole mangrove is crawling with snakes. I don't care, I just want my whirl and my crabs. So I'm careful, I'm going through and I'm holding on. And I'm, so I get one crab and I tie him up and I put him in my bag. Big mud crabs, I love the mud crabs. So I got two, three maybe mud crabs. So I'm looking for whirl now. So I'm swinging over to this tree and I'm dodging this snake and that snake. Sometimes when the tide rushes out, it washes a lot of the mud out and you can almost stand on the sand underneath. And there's this lovely little river going out to sea. But, uh, 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 don't go walking across that. Because my dad reckoned, you walk across that, might be a crocodile in there. So I'm thinking, as I always do when my dad tells me something, is he telling me, was he like my mum with the red eye? So I just broke off a little branch. I thought I'll find out. And I threw it in the water, snap, and it went like that. The crocodile leapt up and just like that. Whoa. My dad was right. And the crocodile looked at me. And you know what I reckon he was saying? I bet you're glad you got a dad. Put his head up again. He said, I'm so sad that you got a dad 
that told you about me. Then he went back down. I'm not with you, but that's scary. So I went through the trees, got over to the mud flats, and I watched the tigers coming back in. I got my bag of wolves. I knew where I came. And I went back. Snakes didn't bother me. Crocodiles didn't get me. And I got my fill bag, wool, and crabs. But it was still a scary. Oh, boy, you paint a vivid picture. Scary. It was scary. I feel like I was right there with you. I'm particularly... I can tell you, when the, when the tide comes in, there's hammerhead sharks and crocodiles come for you too. Okay, great. It's good to know that nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe. They can get you in the sea. Anywhere. They can get you on land. They can. Well, I'm really glad that your dad told you about that crop. <laughs> and I'm really glad you had the sense to test the theory with a stick before with you tested stick. it with your person. Better than my leg than the stick. I mean, <laughs> better than the stick than the leg. Oh, well, as scary as they are, I do enjoy a scary story and hope everyone who is listening enjoyed that scary too. But I didn't scare you that too yeah, well, I don't know. I'm going to have to read this book again tonight so that I can sleep. <laughs> but I want to ask the people watching, first of all, hope you really enjoyed that story. I did. Why do you think people love scary stories? Like what is it about them that makes us jump, hide, laugh and scream? I certainly jumped during that story. So I want you to think about Bori's story and all the bits that you loved about it. Was it the way he used his voice or how he used certain words to describe certain things and write down all the things that Buri did to make his scary story work and see if you can use those storytelling skills to create your own scary tale. Maybe it's about something that you do every day with a scary element added to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. Buri, it has been such a pleasure having you here on Story Talks. I have absolutely loved hearing your stories and chatting with you. Did you have fun? Oh, me? I'm, I'm fabulous. I hope you all, I hope I didn't scare you too much. I hope you didn't, the bad joke wasn't that bad, but all dad jokes bad. Uh, but I love being here with you and I reckon I can hear your laughter, even though you haven't seen this yet. And I can hear you being scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, everyone, it's been lovely sharing this story talks with you. Happy storytelling, everybody, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.